Yes. And one that went down here? Yes. Which one do you count as the time it takes? The shortest one. Okay, so that's what that's the official definition. If the non-deterministic algorithm accepts a string, the time it takes is the distance from the initial configuration to an accepting configuration. That's the shortest one. Okay? Everybody understand that? It's technical, but we have to make sure everybody's on the same page here with the definitions. Okay, questions about this? I'll get to your question, but not, not just yet. It'll, it'll take a little while. Okay, so here's the first thing I want to do. I want to convince you before we go into anything more that this picture is really true. That P space contains P and that P space contains NP and that NP contains P. That it goes in this order. So two of these are very, very straightforward. NP certainly contains P because non-deterministic polynomial algorithms can do everything polynomial algorithms can do. You just don't have choices on them. I mean, everything in here is by definition something in here. So that's just the special case of this. That relationship is by definition. P space contains P because of our definition of space and time. Space means how many different cells you visit on the tape. Time means how many different steps you take. So if you have something that takes 30 steps, it's got to take at least, sorry, if something that takes, did I say that right? Something that takes 30 steps is going to take no more than 30 cells. Right? Can't visit anymore. So anything that's time f of n is going to be space f of n. It's going to be inside it. All right? So what about NP? How do you know that NP sits in between? Maybe NP is way out here. It turns out that anything that you can do in non-deterministic polynomial time, you can do in deterministic polynomial space. And the reason for this is based on something we've already done. And I'm going to review what we've done and analyze it as we go. So here's what we're going to do. Somebody gives you a non-deterministic Turing machine that runs in polynomial time. They're telling you that's the case. And you take it. It's called M. It's non-deterministic. It's polynomial time. An example for M is uh, something that solves the Hamiltonian circuit problem. It non-deterministically chooses a sequence of vertices and then checks that they actually all connect together and make a circuit. We've done a lot of these non-deterministic algorithms in the algorithms class. So there's a non-deterministic polynomial time algorithm. How are you going to simulate this without non-determinism? If you take the non-determinism away and you have to do the same algorithm without the non-determinism but just determinism, what do you do? We talked about this when we went ahead just to prove that anything non-deterministic done in a Turing machine could really be done deterministically. So let's do it, but this time let's keep our eye on how much time and space we pay in order to do this simulation. Okay? So we're going to do the same simulation, non-determinism to determinism, but let's watch what happens to the time and space. Let's see if it grows. All right, what do we do? How, do we do, how did we simulate non-determinism? We can make this picture again. Here's a non-deterministic machine. It's essentially a big, big graph like this. The machine describes to us the choices at every step. And we can build this graph, or this tree, as deep as we like. And it represents the possible computations of this machine. And what we want to do in order to decide whether a string is accepted by this machine or not, this machine's magic. It just makes the right choice and finds it. If we want to do this deterministically, we actually have to look through this tree and find a path that goes from here all the way down to a leaf that has an accepting configuration. So how do we do that deterministically? We just do a brute force kind of algorithm. Let's say that the maximum number of choices at any node is, is 4. Say it never gets bigger than 4. There's going to be some maximum, some maximum number of arrows that come out of a node. If the maximum is 4, then here was our plan. We have one tape that we keep the input on, and we leave that separate. We have one tape at the bottom here that's used for simulating the program of this non-deterministic machine. And then we have one tape that tells us which choices to make while we simulate. So the first thing we do is we simulate this machine with one step. 
And that one step can either be, and I'll expand this over here, it can be a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 4, corresponding to these four choices. So we write our deterministic Turing machine to generate these numbers in order on this tape. And then we take the finite state machine of the, of the non-determinism, and we go ahead, look at this input, and simulate it, making those choices one at a time. And we check after each one whether we have succeeded in hit an accepting configuration. Now after one step, we're not likely to find an accepting configuration. So we go on and do it now for two steps. But now for two steps, what's it going to look like? You can do 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. Let's do just this example. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. You can also do 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3. Then you can do 3, 1, and 3, 2. And then you can do... 4, 1, and 4, 2. And these numbers that you generate on this tape represent taking the computation first this way, then this way, then this way. We are just doing a breadth first generation of this tree, step by step by step, looking to see if we ever get an accepting configuration. We are just generating every possible leaf of this tree, one by one in a systematic way, deterministically. And you can write a Turing machine to generate these numbers deterministically and simulate each time. Isn't that, number, isn't that on the tape growing exponentially, though? Well, let's talk about that right now. Let's talk about, well, before we talk about that, let me make sure everybody gets the simulation. Are there questions about what we're doing here? We're turning non-determinism to determinism, and now what we're going to do after we realize that it's really doing what the non-deterministic machine is supposed to do and doing it step by step, let's measure how much time and space it takes, which is what Chris is asking about. So what do we pay to do this? This machine is guaranteed to run in non-deterministic polynomial time. That means the number of steps it takes on this simulation is polynomial in the size of the input. So let's see how much time we pay. Every one of these simulations is going to be polynomial because we're just simulating the old machine. So that's not going to be bad. We don't do anything with this tape. That doesn't give us any time. What about this tape? This tape is where we're really slowing ourselves down. We do a lot of these simulations. How many do we do? Not just one. First we do four of them. Then we do potentially, what's the most here? Four times four. We could have gotten 16 possibilities. Then we do four times four times four. The, um, yeah? The yes or no yeah. for this non-determinist machine has to come at the end, right? Yes. The, the, so why, I don't understand why we have to say Oh, we don't know when the end's going to come. For all we know, it stops after one stage and says, I accept. Like, let's say, let's say this non-deterministic machine runs in n squared time. That means it never takes more than n squared steps on any input. But on some inputs, it might take one step. It doesn't have to take at least n squared steps. In other words, it's possible that we stop after one step and say, yes, I accept that string. So we have to check that. We just don't want to generate way down at the bottom to go past an accepting configuration and then miss it. You know, do you get it, sir? All right. Well, how far might we go here? Here's one step. Here's two steps. You got to go three steps. How many steps do you have to go? Well, I didn't tell you what this polynomial time thing was. Let's call it f of n. This is going to find an accepting computation after f of n steps at the very worst. Could be n squared, could be n cubed. So this is 1, this is 2, dot, 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 dot. This is the list for the f of n steps. How many different things are in this list? Here we have 4 to the 1. Here we have 4 squared, possibly. Here we're going to have 4 to the f of n. This is how many different sequences of numbers will appear successively on this tape when we finally get to the bottom, at which point we know we can stop simulating. Right? I mean, if you don't get it after this point, you can just stop. You don't have to keep going further. You can say, no, it's never going to accept. It's going to be in some infinite loop because you've got a bound on how long it's supposed to take. That's kind of an important stopping point. That means you never have to simulate this forever. But you do have to go this far, and this is a lot. Four to the f of n sequences of strings here. And every one of them has to be written on this tape. That's a lot of time. You're paying a big amount of time to go from non-determinism to determinism. And here's where you're paying.